Tonight, we crack open Featherbone. It's cast strength and it's weeded. Welcome to the show. Well, I've been looking at journeyman for a while. I know that I've picked up the corsets, wisps, corsets, whips, and whiskey. Say that three times real fast. Uh, has interest me. It is a weeded whiskey, not a weeded bourbon. So when I was in uh, Sprayberry Bottle Shop the other day and was doing a bourbon hunt, uh, this was prior to our uh, store picks video we did, I saw this Featherbone bourbon whiskey. I thought, well, you know, I really like weeded bourbon more than I like weeded whiskey, at least what I've tried so far. So I thought, I'm going to get this because, you know, I can never have enough weeded bourbons. Well, it's not exactly what I thought it was. If you go to journeyman.com, and they also have a quick code on the label here that comes on the bottle, you can go to their Featherbone section, and even though this is the cast strength, this is still the basic Featherbone, just at a higher proof. Uh, it's won several awards, including a couple from uh, Fred Minnick, his Ascot Awards. But what was interesting to me, besides the story, there's a brand story, and I won't go into all that. If you go down to product information at the bottom, they'll tell you that this is a single distillation from 70% organic corn, 25% organic wheat, and 5% organic rye. Are you waiting for the light bulb to go off? It took me a while going like, wait a minute, where's the malted barley? And then I, I downloaded their product sheet and come to find out there is no malted barley in this. This is corn, wheat, and rye. So unlike four grains that have corn, wheat, rye, and barley, and most bourbons that are either corn, wheat, and barley, or corn, rye, and barley, this is corn, wheat, and rye. I don't think I've ever run across a bourbon that was corn, wheat, and rye before. So this just piqued my interest even more and why I had to get to it uh, tonight to do this first pour. Uh, this is distilled and bottled by Journeyman Distillery in Three Oaks, Michigan. Uh, the fact that the, uh, all the grain is organic was interesting and they note that it's handmade. Tonight, we're gonna to find out what this feather bone is all about. And if I really like it, then obviously the corsets, whips, and whiskey is coming next in my collection. And I see the court, I see that a lot of places more than I see the feather bone. The feather bone was, was new to me. I hadn't seen that any other place before. Looking at their website, I couldn't find anything about tasting notes. Now, it may be somewhere else, but in the section I was in, there was nothing about tasting notes. So, since Total Wine carries this, and I know they like to put tasting notes on, on their website, uh, it says it's from Michigan, obviously. Aromas of fresh corn, wheat grains, and a hint of vanilla. Okay. I would say I definitely get the wheat and the vanilla. So I think that's pretty accurate. And really more, of, more than a hint. I'm getting a pretty strong vanilla from that. Of course, this is the cast string, so they're probably talking about the 90 proof. They say the palate has a surprising amount of oak, plus some baking spices, cereal, grains, and leather. Why people like to taste leather in a bourbon, I haven't figured that out yet, but cheers. Definitely very oaky, uh, and uh, uh, more than a little bit of baking spices, a lot of baking spices. I'm getting really kind of nutmeg central here uh, with a, maybe a hint of cinnamon, but a lot of spice, a little bit of sweetness, and quite a bit of oak, I would say. 
and on that first taste. Well, let's take another sip. I wasn't sure on the first sip, but on the second sip, I think I've confirmed a little, of, a little bit of a peanutty taste. Now, I know this is not MGP, but it kind of reminds me of some of the MGPs. It reminds me of some of the Jim Beams. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, the peanutty flavor really reminds me a lot of the Bookers that... Uh, 202304, The Storytellers. Uh, this is, uh, it's got a nice peanut flavor, a little bit sweet, a lot like the Booker's. Now, I'm not saying it's a lot like the Booker's, I'm saying the peanut flavor that's in here is a lot like the Booker's. Hmm. Yet, I really can't pick that up in the aroma. So let's uh, <clears throat> take one more sip and we'll go to final thoughts. Final thoughts. Well, um, this bourbon does remind me a lot of the Booker's, maybe because I just had that recently. And it has that very pleasant peanut, sweet peanut flavor to it. Um, this is obviously nothing like the Booker's. I mean, the Booker's is absolutely wonderful. This is good. Uh, but value for the money, $69.99 is what I paid for it. And as I understand it, the regular feather bone, uh, if you could find it, um, is around $41.99 or $42.99. So a good bit of difference uh, between the cast strength and the uh, standard. And this isn't a single barrel, so I'm not sure it's a great value for the money. I wish it was a little less expensive. I do like it. I will drink it. But I'm also going to look at that version that's $41.99 at Total Wine, if they ever get it back in stock. If it has that peanut flavor, that richness, even at a lower proof, that would be a great deal. That would be a very good value. So I'm going to have to find the 90 proof and see if I like it as much as this 114. So that brings us to our recommendation system, one through five. One being the highest, stop the video and go and get it right now. It's not anywhere close to a one. And I would tell you, it's really not anywhere close to a five. It's dead middle. I'm going to give it a solid number three. Shop around for the best price. I don't see this everywhere. You may not see it everywhere. So if you can't find the feather bone cast strength, then I think maybe you should try the Featherbone 90 proof. Uh, that flavor is still going to be in there, even if it's a little less intense and certainly less proof. Uh, it does have a good flavor profile, and uh, I think it could be an excellent daily sipper. Uh, it, uh, it reminds me of, in some ways, of the Knob Creek, uh, somewhere between the 9 and the 12. Not as good as the 12, but better than the nine. So that'll probably be the closest real comparison I could give you. So we hope you will like this video. You'll comment and share. And if you tried this journeyman, the cast strength or the 90, let me know what you think about it. I think it's pretty good. I just think that uh, this cast strength one is a little bit pricey for what I'm getting. So. As always, never drink and drive. Please drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time. Tonight, we crack open Featherbone. This is cast strength, and it's weeded.